Hello YouTube, Yaroslav is here from Gateway IT and today I'm going to show you how to properly configure the email notification settings on your free PBX installation. If you've bought a free PBX admin module pro, then it is really easy to configure your email settings in just few clicks. Not so much if you don't have that module, right? So I will walk you through a few configuration files that we need to edit and then we'll show you what changes have to be made on the web GUI side to get your emails out of your free PBX box. The setup will cover both user side notifications like emails with voicemail file attached and admin notifications like backup, update or fault reports. Few things you need before we can get started. Firstly, any kind of SMTP service enabled email account. The most commonly used accounts in the industry would be Gmail or Microsoft Exchange slash Office 365, which both support SMTP. And the second would be SSH root access to your free PBX box. As usual, let's just start with SSHing into your free PBX server. Let me just make it a bit bigger so you can see it. So first off, we have to edit this file and add few lines to the end of it. So in my case, relay host would be mailgateway-it.com with port 587. If you want to authenticate with plain text, use port 25. And if you change to port 25, don't forget to comment out this line. For me, this configuration file looks just fine. So I'll exit and save it. Then we need to create this file. and type in the next information. I'm sorry, let me just quickly edit this. So this would be your SMTP mail host. Then again, your port. This is your username and this is your domain part. This part is your password. Please don't try to log in on this email account because it will be deleted once I publish the video. Now we need to change permissions on this file and hash it into postfix. Now we need to change the ownership for that file from root to postfix user and then just reload postfix service. Now we need to add some rewrite from address rules to postfix. For me, the configuration will look like this, adjusted to your own domain settings. Save the file and exit. Now the last thing we have to add to postfix main configuration file. This is to activate our rewrite rules. And to finish CLI side of the configuration, we need to reload postfix. At this point, we could go to the web interface and start changing some default values. But what I want to do first is test if we have email connectivity. 
this last command right here will send you a test email and it will try to use the credentials we just gave it. The S flag would mean the subject. Now type in email body. Hit control D and then enter. If you could hear that, that was a notification from my Thunderbird that I received a mail. As you can see, we received the email and it was sent from PBX email tutorial at gatewayit.com, which is indeed the email we configured it to send from. Now, when we know that it's all good on the backend side, let's move to the web GUI. So the first place we have to go to is admin, system admin, notification settings. Let me make it a bit bigger so you can see it on mobile devices. So from address would be the address that we configured on our email server which is pbx email tutorial at gateway-it.com. Then for storage notifications, enter your email address or address of any other system administrator who is responsible for this free pbx box. And the same goes for intrusion detection notifications. Now hit submit. So the next place we need to go to would be settings, advanced settings. Here we need to find backup module. And again, insert your server email address. Hit submit and apply config. The next up would be settings, fax configuration. The lines that are interesting to us are outgoing email address and email address. Our outgoing email address would be pbx email tutorial at gateway-it.com and our email address would be the address of someone who needs to receive all faxes. Hit submit and apply config. Next, go to settings, voicemail admin, settings, and email config. Now we need to type in our server email right down here. You can also edit a name of your sender in this box. Hit submit. Apply config. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.